Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, I've got a ton of emulation news for you. We're talking about PS2, PS4, Nintendo DS, Box 86, Cricks, as well as PS Plus. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about Nintendo DS emulation on PC with Desmumi. Yes, you're hearing this correctly, something a lot of us thought was dead. Desmumi has risen from the ashes out of absolutely nowhere has a brand new release. I am not joking here, prior to today, the last stable build of Desmumi was released back on April 15th of 2015, seven years ago, and the most recent development or experimental build was released back in 2019, so it has been a while since we've heard anything about this emulator. But yes, much to the surprise and delight of pretty much everybody who likes DS emulation, including myself, I didn't see the this one coming, uh, Desmumi 0.9.13 was just released. And they say in this version we have added support for high resolution 3D rendering, try the new GPU scaling factor feature to increase the 3D resolution beyond the native resolution of 256 by 192 pixels, so you can make your DS games look a heck of a lot better. They say also the Coco front end sees continued radical enhancements and while the Windows front end sees some new incremental enhancements. Desmumi is open source, it's 100% free, and it's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll leave a link to the downloads page in the description below. I highly recommend checking it out. And on a side note here, for those wondering, they do state Wi-Fi not emulated and not supported, and also they won't be making a 3DS or 2DS emulator at all. Next up here, we're talking about PlayStation 2 emulation on Android with none other than Aether SX2. Aether SX2 just got a brand new update, it's not yet on the Google Play Store, but if you wanted to check it out, you absolutely can. This new version of Aether SX2 offers some quality of life improvements as well as some bug fixes. Tower states, rebase on Upstream. Upstream is PCSX2. PCSX2 and Aether SX2 do go hand in hand. Also in this update, fix screen offsets in Devil May Cry 1. Add save state on shutdown and resume. I really like this one, so it should automatically save your progress if you are to shut down your game. Add auto 4x3 and 3x2 aspect ratio options. Also here, there's a fix for folder mem cards ejecting when starting some games and fix FMV flicker in some games like Neo Contra. Now I want to point out here that this latest update to Aether SX2 is considered a development version. It's not fully supported by the developer. Things might be broken, things might not work as anticipated, it is more or less a testing build of the emulator. So if you don't want any issues whatsoever, just wait for it to be updated in the Google Play Store. Otherwise, you can head to AetherSX2.com, click on Close Testing Alpha, and from here pick up the latest and greatest version, which at the time of filming is 122.82 Alpha-2020. Moving on now, and we're still talking about PlayStation 2 emulation just on PC with PCSX2. Just the other day, we mentioned a massive update to PCSX2 in terms of the overall UI and a few other features. Well, there's another update to PCSX2, kind of. If you are interested in helping out the project at all, you now can. If you are curious, I will drop a link to the PCSX2 GitHub page in the description below. Feel free to check it out if you are interested in possibly becoming a sponsor. The money is going towards server cost as well as being split by the developers to help fund purchases for game debugging and much more. And for the record, yes, I am a sponsor of PCSX2. I fully believe in this project. Next up, we're talking about IBM PC emulation with 86box. 86box version 3.5 just released and there are some major updates here. As previously alluded to, 86box now supports Apple chips, although there is a bit of an issue. 86 box is not officially signed by Apple, so there is a bit of a workaround to get this up and running. As always with Apple, nothing is simple and straightforward. On top of that here, they have added in a Vulkan renderer. They've also added in a bunch of new PC clones as well as a bunch of bug fixes. Next up, this is a quick one, but if you're in a modding your PlayStation 4, you're really going to like this piece of news. PlayStation 4 support has now been merged into the mainline RetroArch repo. This will be a lot easier for a lot of people to get RetroArch up and running on their PS4, hopefully. Next up, we're talking about Nintendo 64 not emulation with the EverDrive 64. 
If you have a bunch of your N64 games in ROM format and you want to play them on an official N64 cartridge, you can with the EverDrive 64. You can place a bunch of ROMs on there, one cartridge kind of to rule them all. Anyways, Crix has a brand new special version of this EverDrive. Crix says we are going to open orders on the EverDrive 64X7 Limited Edition this week. It will cost more than the regular version, only 100 units will be manufactured. All profit will be donated to the defense of Ukraine. For those who are unaware, Crix is from the Ukraine. Crix and his family were evacuated from Ukraine and basically had their entire life uprooted and changed. And they've managed to continue on with business here and continue on pushing forward. And this limited edition looks pretty darn cool. Last up, we're talking about PlayStation Plus. Some people are excited about this and a lot of people really aren't. PlayStation seems to have screwed up something fairly major, at least in my opinion. It appears that Sony will be using the PAL version of some PS1 games regardless of what region you're in within PS Plus. And a lot of people won't like this. PAL versions of games run at 50Hz as opposed to 60Hz for NTSC, which means they run a little bit slower. On the plus side, it looks like some games are the NTSC version, but emulation isn't the best. The Marmalade here says emulation is poor and a little bit sluggish, which does not inspire a lot of confidence. It is worth noting that this is still extremely early on, and things might change between now and Never, we'll just have to wait and see. On the plus side, if you're really into PS1 emulation, at least you get some fancy filters, like a CRT filter if you want. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about anything we talked about today in the comments below, and we talked about quite a bit. Let me know your thoughts about Dismumi rising from the dust. Are you excited about it? Are you gonna test it out? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.